I quite often get questions about what my PC specs are, what kind of PC you need to run Unreal for a variety of use cases, and that is the question I aim to answer today. I'm not going to do a deep dive into the nitty gritty, super technical details with numbers and charts and graphs. If you want that, there are better channels out there. What I'm going to do today is give you an artist's perspective on what your workstation should have. So I'm sure someone's going to come along with an um actually, but that isn't really the point here. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers. And right here, I've got the ASUS ZenBook Pro 16 laptop. This is not my laptop. I don't get to keep it. It's being sent back and only used for showcasing purposes. Right before we jump into today's topic, I'm going to take a brief moment to talk about the hardware in this laptop, which you can use as a reference point for the specs we'll be talking about later. The ZenBook Pro 16 runs on an RTX 4070. RTX GPUs allow you to fully utilize hardware ray tracing, path tracing, and hardware accelerated lumen. It has plenty of CUDA cores, which are used by a bunch of 3D applications like reality capture if you're doing photogrammetry. And since this is the 40 series GPU, you can benefit from DLSS 3, which can be used directly in Unreal to increase the snappiness and preserve details in the viewport. It allows you to leverage AI to get better viewport performance in Unreal Engine 5. While this laptop has 8 gigs of VRAM, you can choose other variants of it with up to 16 gigs. It's got a Core i9 processor, which handles Unreal shader compilations like a Champ, 16 gigs of RAM, again, you can spec it differently if you need more, and the display on this laptop is really good. 120 hertz with 100% DCI-P3 and 100% sRGB color coverage, and it's OLED. Some notable quality of life features include this hinged keyboard, which feels really good when I'm typing because I'm the kind of guy who likes using the little feet on a keyboard to get a better angle, but it also seems to help with the cooling. And the trackpad here has haptic feedback, which is also pretty nice. NVIDIA Studio is for creators what NVIDIA GeForce is for gamers, right down to the drivers. Even on my personal desktop workstations, I always use Studio drivers just because I find them a lot more reliable for creative work. I'm not a gamer, so I value reliability over anything. If a PC is NVIDIA Studio validated, it means its spec and design meet the needs of a creator. You can get NVIDIA Studio laptops and desktops at Scan Computers. Check out the link down below. Okay, so let's dive into the juicy detail that you came here for. For you, as a consumer, a PC is composed of roughly these main components. You've got the GPU, CPU, RAM, motherboard, power supply, fans and cooling, the case, and storage. Now, I could go on and talk about each and every one of these, but the things that really matter for Unreal are the GPU, CPU, and RAM. Everything else is largely personal preference. So let's get started with the most exciting and fun PC upgrade, the GPU. This is the heart and soul of your work in Unreal, as Unreal Engine is basically a GPU renderer. This is what will make a substantial difference in your working experience. It's going to affect your frame rates in your viewport and whether or not you're even able to render anything. The key component that sets cards apart, for Unreal usage anyway, is the VRAM. It's not the clock speeds or the CUDA cores. Like, yeah, those, those things matter, but that's not the point. VRAM is gold. You can never have too much. I would prefer to have a slower GPU with more VRAM rather than the fastest card in the world with not enough memory. Now, the amount of VRAM you need entirely depends on your use case. Are you making a mobile game or are you working in virtual production with huge LED wall for feature films? As a general rule of thumb, I recommend a minimum of eight gigs of VRAM. Unfortunately, modern GPUs rarely have less, but the more you have, the better. A classic example I use all the time is comparing the RTX 3060 versus the 3070. The 3070 is a faster card. You'll get better frame rates, but the 3060 has four gigs more VRAM. Every little bit matters because here's the thing. If you run out of VRAM while rendering, you're going to have Not just that, but once you run out of VRAM, your viewport experience becomes terrible to work with, completely undermining any benefits of a faster GPU anyway. So while a slower GPU with more VRAM may take longer to render shots, it will actually complete those renders without crashing. What use is the faster card if you're crashing all the time? That is why workstation GPUs like the A6000 with 48 gigs of VRAM are used on virtual production sets. It can handle insane resolutions. If you're rendering at a lower resolution like 720p or 1080p, 8 gigs is going to be plenty fine. But the moment you need to render in native 4K or even 8K, you absolutely need that VRAM. 
Resolution is the VRAM killer. It chomps and devours memory like no one's business. With that being said, you don't need a top of the line GPU to do good work. Some of the best work I've ever done in Unreal was done with a 2060 Super with eight gigs of VRAM. This laptop here has enough horsepower to render out what I made three years ago on a desktop workstation with the added benefit of it being a completely mobile machine. But also you don't always need to render native 4K. There are so many amazing upscaling tools out there now, like NVIDIA DLSS and Nuke, for example, have the TVI scale node that upscale 2X extremely well. DaVinci Resolve also has a similar feature. So with eight gigs of VRAM, you can render your shots out at 1080p and then just upscale them to 4K in post with great results. If you need to render in 4K though, then I recommend a minimum of 16 gigs of VRAM but 24 gives you a lot more breathing room. I'm definitely gonna catch a bit of flack for saying this, but personally, I find 4K to be largely overkill in most situations. Yeah, of course, it looks amazing. I'm not debating that, but my own monitor that I daily drive is 1440p, and that is the resolution I render most of my shots at. Resolution isn't everything. You can do good work with less. You might not know this, but most movies in the last 25 years have been mastered in 2K. Food for thought. Next, we have the CPU. And in my honest opinion, while the CPU is important, it isn't as important as it used to be for Unreal. Hear me out. Everyone at some point has been waiting long minutes or hours staring at this, compiling shaders. It is the bane of any artist's existence. Things can take forever. Unreal is incredibly efficient at using the CPU when compiling, utilizing all of its cores, which is a good thing. So when it comes to time to choosing, a fast CPU with lots of cores is going to speed up the compiling process, but the CPU isn't usually under heavy load when using Unreal or rendering. Of course, there are some exceptions here when you've got some very CPU heavy calculations like we have in the Matrix demo, but as long as your CPU is not bottlenecking your GPU, you can get away with something a little bit less expensive here, as long as you're willing to be patient with the shader compilations. You don't need monster CPUs like a Threadripper or Intel Xeons. I've done loads of work on Core i7s and Ryzen 7s. Both are mid-tier budget CPUs. A big, beefy, expensive CPU is gonna be more of a quality of life upgrade rather than a mission critical one. CPUs mattered a lot more back in the day when you had to bake lighting. But with Lumen, ray tracing, and path tracing all being run off RTX GPUs, it's way less of an issue now. The CPU is not going to prevent you from working unlike running out of VRAM. I'm sure many of you may disagree, but that's my hot take for today. Now, what kind of PC do I daily drive in 2024? The CPU I use is a Ryzen 7950X and an RTX 4080. I also have a rendering PC with an A6000 GPU that has 48 gigs of VRAM and it can handle anything I throw at it. But why? am I not using the A6000 as my daily driver? Uh, it's because it's really loud and runs a little hot because of the blower style GPU. The 4080 by comparison, is completely silent and has enough VRAM for most of my needs. But when I do need more, that's when I render off the A6000. As for RAM, I run with 128 gigs because I need it for procedural stuff or simulation sometimes, which brings me to my next point, RAM. 16 gigs should be the absolute minimum with 64 being my recommended amount for most people. I used to run with 64 and the only time I've ever blown that limit is through user error. When I added like a, a few too many zeros to my procedural forest layout. If you have to choose between faster RAM or having more available RAM, personally, I say go for more RAM. Not enough RAM means crashes. Slower RAM won't prevent me from getting work done. You might be seeing a recurring pattern here. I don't care if something is a little bit slower, as long as it doesn't prevent me from getting work done. Of course, having the fastest top of the line PC that has a ton of memory is great. A Rolls Royce is going to be a way more pleasant driving experience than a Honda Civic, but use what you can afford. Both cars will get you to work on time. Now, lastly, I just wanna talk a little bit about storage. It's no secret that Unreal takes a massive amount of storage space. With its huge textures and high resolution 3D models, the Mega Scans library, 
I recommend having a drive separate from your boot drive with a fairly high capacity, like two to four terabytes. It sounds like a lot, but you're going to need it. Like whether it's an NVMe M.2 or SATA SSD, that doesn't matter too much as long as it's not a hard drive. So a big thank you to NVIDIA and Scan Computers for sponsoring this video. Scan Computers are one of the leading resellers of NVIDIA Studio laptops and desktops in Europe. So if you're looking for an NVIDIA Studio PC, then check out the range at the link down below. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, folks, happy rendering.